I want to show you how all these different impacts that I've talked about are really giving us a window into what future conditions might look like. So future predictions under climate change scenarios are that we're going to have rising seas. Rising seas means we have more extreme water level events because we have a background and then we get this extra on top of it. Warmer oceans and air, larger but potentially less frequent. This is something that is a little bit more un unclear. Storms bringing big waves and potential flooding ocean acidification, and reduced snow and ice cover. These are sort of the big picture things of climate change. Which one of these do we see during El Nino? So on the, particularly on the US Pacific coast. So we do see enhanced sea level. El Nino itself actually leads to a bump up in the sea level because of the warmer waters as well as because of the atmospheric conditions. We have much warmer oceans and air as uh, Julie showed you the ocean temperatures. Um, we don't necessarily get larger storms, although the ones we've seen this year have been particularly large, but we definitely always see large waves, and you've seen that, you know, all of these impacts I've showed you have shown you the, the importance of the waves. And so, really, El Nino sort of winds up being a little bit of a window into the future of what we might expect under a changing climate. This is a picture of sea level rise in particular, just because I want to show this particular effect. Um, everything over here is all observations, and as we move forward past the observations, we're looking at projections from a whole variety of climate models. And the blue curve versus the red curve with their error bars are whether we cut carbon emissions significantly or whether we continue with business as usual. So we're looking at pretty significant future sea level. But as I've mentioned, you know, what we're interested in is the exact sea level at a particular point in time on the coast. So, you know, if you go down to the ocean tomorrow morning, uh, what is that sea level that you see at that moment you're out there caused by? So it's caused by a variety of things. You have these long-term risk factors like that sea level rise, but you also have things that sort of occur on a decadal cycle, such as El Nino, and the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. So these are natural cycles that occur that can change sea level on top of that large, long term. And then we add on top of that high tides. So extreme high tides here can add about seven feet, sometimes a little bit more, to the total water level you're seeing at the coastline. And then we add on top of that extreme storm wave setup and run up. And so that's it's all of these things added together that lead to the exact water level that you happen to see on the coastline. And some people see this and they think, oh, well then maybe sea level rise doesn't matter because it's small relative to how large some of these other natural variabilities can be. However, the important thing is that even if you have a small change in sea level, that means that the frequency of large events actually increases. So as we move forward in time, this is the number of hours of large events that are above historical levels. And so we get many, many more large events, sort of like what we've, saw, what we've seen this year. So we have a background sea level rise because of El Nino, and then we're getting these large storm events, and they're having a very large impact on our coastline. And just to try to put it in a little bit of a quantitative perspective, um, background sea level this winter has been Eh, it ranges from about eight inches, sometimes up to 15 inches higher than average. And that's sort of what we might expect to see 45 to 60 years from now based on these types of predictions. So this is what we're saying about it being this window into the future. So you can sort of think about these impacts you're seeing and when you're out there on the beach, think about what does our beach look like in 20 years? What does it look like in 50 years? And what is the best way to manage it? 